You want to build a brand new gaming PC, or maybe you just want to upgrade your PC, especially that Battlefield 6, and a lot of other great titles are out. Maybe you're sick of console gaming, we get it. You don't wanna pay $30 a month for Game Pass, so I'm gonna give you the best CPUs starting from the top. Now, fam, fam guys, if you're looking for any of these processors that you do wanna pick up, make sure to check down in the description box down below. The first one I do have to mention is the 99 x 3d stands at the top of the 16 core and up to 32 threads it also has a 3d v cache which will be also very useful for those who want to game up to 4k resolution or you want to get the most out of your 1440p display you can use it for high refresh rates and thanks to its 3d v cache you can take full advantage of its gaming benefits and not only can you take advantage of its gaming benefits but you can also take advantage of the productivity usage especially if you're planning to do some video editing and some type of streaming so don't expect any type of bottlenecking when you're using a cpu just like this one you can push this up to 200 watts which is also somewhat power efficient for such a powerful processor i would also recommend to also pair this if you are planning to get something this strong of a processor you should honestly pair it with the x870e and one of my personal favorite recommendations is when it comes to asus's e-gaming x870e boards they're really top notch and same thing with gigabytes or master because of the demand of pci express 5 and you can also take advantage of the mvme pci express 5 speeds you want to be able to unlock your full potential when it comes to the 9950x 3d the second one i'm going to recommend intel's i9 285k and you're probably thinking why isn't it not the 9800x 3d and i'll explain exactly why the reason being is Intel's 285K is still a beast, regardless of all the different things you hear, especially because you hear things like it doesn't perform as well as the 13th and 14th gen. Yeah, that could be true, but it's also not frying the processors as well with it. But remember, it is packing up to 24 cores and it is a hybrid processor. You can expect eight performance cores and 16 efficient cores, which is super important when it comes to a processor. There is no hyper threading. The CPU also brings up to 5.7 gigahertz. Also great for anybody out there that is into overclocking. It's really neck and neck when it comes to AMD's Ryzen 9800X 3D when it comes to the gaming aspect. The reason why this is number two is because I'm looking at it more for the productivity uses, especially for those out there who are looking for a processor that's able to game and also able to do photo editing and video editing. It's also great for streaming as well, especially at 4K gaming. There's not really that much of a stretch when it comes to, say, the 9800X 3D when you compare the Intel 285K. But if you're looking for something that is also great for gaming and performance, it's more centric to more of the productivity side. Take a look at Intel's 285K. You won't be disappointed as it does require Intel's Z890 boards to really unleash the power of it. You're not going to want to use anything less than that. You want to take full advantage of PCI Express 5 speeds and the NVMe PCI Express 5 speeds. You also want to take advantage of Thunderbolt 4. Now, when it comes to number three, I would have to give it to AMD's Ryzen 9800X3D. Now, this isn't really a bad processor to use it for on the productivity side. I will have to say that first, but it's definitely not going to be the top one to use for productivity. In fact, I would highly recommend anyone who is thinking of a 9800X3D to strictly use it more for the gaming aspect. It's a great processor, it has up to eight cores and up to 16 threads. It also does feature the 3D V cache built into AMD's processors, which is known to expand and excel when it comes to the gaming aspect. It's so good, this processor, when it comes to gaming, it can easily keep up with Intel's 285K. It even can keep up with the 9950X3D, which is pretty insane. If you're thinking of gaming in 4K, this processor without a doubt can certainly help boost your frames. If you also compare it to the 7800X3D, it's also quite the improvement 
when it comes to the IPCs up to 10 to 15% extreme. And you can also video encode as well when it comes to this processor. But again, don't expect magical numbers. It's going to be quite slow, especially for the core count and the thread count on this processor. Again, this is more of the gamer's processor here. So please get this processor if you're thinking of strictly just gaming. You can stream on it too, but it's definitely better to go with the 9950X3D if that's the case. Now for all you productivity users. This is definitely on the higher list when it comes to productivity. It's going to be AMD's Ryzen 9950X. And not the one that's the X3D, which we mentioned earlier, which was the first placed one. You can also use it for gaming as well, but this is definitely more recommended for those who use it for productivity productivity usage in fact it does have up to 16 cores and up to 32 threads it doesn't feature the cool 3d v cache now this is technically amd's flagship processor here the 9950x so for those who are trying to use it in applications for decoding encoding if you're trying to use it for things like 3d modeling this is certainly a great processor to do so it won't have any issues going through video rendering even when it comes to 3d ray tracing jobs especially for for some reason you want to use this processor for a 9950x for gaming you certainly could you can actually game up to 4k with this processor it's still really good for that but don't expect to get the same numbers as a 9950x3 because thanks to the 3d v cache it certainly could make a difference if you are using something like this you don't really need to go to get the x870e you can actually just get the x870 and still take full advantage of its full potential there as you can take the pc express 5 most importantly it does have the usb 4 in it it's also ranked as a productivity leader when it comes to amd's zen 5 line now the 265k is a slight step down from its original flagship which we just mentioned at the number two spot which is the 285k but this does have eight performance cores and up to 12 efficiency cores that leads up to 20 cores it just targets more high-end performance just for a more fair price the Ultra 7 essentially offers a flagship type of performance, so you could actually pull some really great numbers if you are looking to game in 4K or even 1440p. Of course, it won't be anywhere near the levels of, say, the 285K or a 9950X3D, but they will still certainly be respectable and smooth. It's 188 watts less compared to its prior generation. Now it still boots up to five gigahertz. It's 12 efficient cores can handle background tasks, but obviously it's not going to beat the i9 or AMD's Ryzen's 9950X, which is the 16 core processor. It is great for anyone out there who is looking to do any type of streaming, wall gaming, or moderate video editing. It's also great for anybody out there that does want to use it for photo editing as well as Adobe is very centric when it comes to Intel processors. So it does have that advantage when it comes to Intel. But to really get the most out this processor, you're going to want to use a Z890 board to reap the full benefits. Reason being, you want the PCI Express 5, especially if you're planning to overclock. So number six has to be the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. Yes, it's a Zen 4 processor, it still works great in AM5. There's really no issues and still a top favorite, especially for gamers out there. It's practically the same as the 9800X3D as it comes to the cores, as it has eight cores and 16 threads, has the 3D V cache. The IPC is just 10 to 15%, so just slower than the 9800X3D, but still performs great if you are gaming on 1440p. And it does, it was technically the fastest chip back in 2023 and it's still one of the top today the only one that really beats it is the 9800x3d so this is ideal for anybody who is building a 1440p type of setup if you want to get something that is fairly priced because you can still pick this up for a really decent deal as you can pick it up for like 360 dollars usd still can do some streaming but don't do some massive streaming 1080p is perfectly fine we'll do some light video editing that's at 1080p and i wouldn't really go crazy when it comes to 3d renders the best motherboard get the ba50 i think you would be plenty happy especially for what it can perform because the ba50 still has pci express 5 
but you will be limited into some aspects of PCI Express 4 when you can enjoy the performance of the 7800X3D on a board like a B850. When it comes to number seven, I have to say it's going to have to be AMD's Ryzen 9700X. And you can pick this up for its great value and it's great for any gamers out there. Don't really use it for productivity use unless you're using it for really, really light productivity because the Ryzen 9700X has eight cores up to 16 threads. It just doesn't have the 3 dv cache. It's still a rock solid processor that balances gaming and productivity pretty well. And after the firmware optimizations and the price drops, it's really hard to beat. It has become a strong option, especially for the price range it's at. You can pick it up for like 300 USD and even trades blows with Intel's Core's i7 chips, their current gen at the 265K. While the 9700X 3D doesn't have the extra 3DV cache like it does with its other models here, the 9700X does work well still with Adobe Premiere or Adobe Photoshop. As a 19% advantage over Intel's i7 in Adobe's Photoshop Pudget Bench, specifically when it comes to the 14th gen. Now it's a capable CPU for 1440p gaming while recording and streaming, and it could go through 4K edit processes. Heavy renders, will take a bit longer especially for how few cores this processor does have now this pairs really well with the ba50 you can take advantage of pci express 5 especially when it comes to the lanes you can take advantage of its overclocking ability since it's only 105 watts tdp it actually is pretty efficient getting a mid-tier ba50 should certainly do it now number eight is going to be intel's core 245k I know it's not going to be the sexiest processor out there. Wouldn't recommend it for the productivity use. It would be great on the gaming aspect. Reason being, it still has because gaming still requires a single core processor more than multi. So that's why the 245K can certainly succeed as six performance cores and eight efficiency cores. So it's going to be great for anybody out there who wants to game in 1080p or 1440p greatness. It can be easily capable of pushing high frames. At 4K, it will still certainly give you the numbers that you're looking for since the bottleneck is mostly going to be the GPU. You still could do some video editing. I would say like if you are, I would push up to at least a 265K. It does offer great gameplay and great for its value. For this processor, you're going to need a LGA 1851 board. You're technically going to still need a Z890 to take advantage, especially if you're looking for overclock abilities. But if you really are looking on a tight budget, even the B860s can do well with this. This is certainly a great CPU out there for any type of builds or any type of upgrades that are going to be more focused on the gaming aspect. Now, when it comes to number nine, it has to be AMD's Ryzen 9600X. Still a wonderful processor out there. Has six cores, 12 threads. It doesn't have the 3D V cache, but it certainly does serve well as a gaming processor on a D budget. In fact, we picked it up so cheap, it was under $200 when we did a 9070 XT build. It performed wonderfully, still was able to push frames up to 1440p with no issue but don't really expect up to 4k gaming as much you can do it technically if you have a strong enough gpu to do so you won't have any issues especially if you're a 1080p gamer 1440p gamer 4k can be get respectable frames but don't expect high refresh rates but when it comes to workloads if you're trying to use it pr for productivity you could but it's not going to perform very well in fact i would say stay away from the productivity side you can certainly use this as like a value processor especially if you're looking for gaming use i would say you can even go with a more affordable board best to go with a b650 even or a b850 preferably go with the b850 you still have pci express 5 there are some B650 boards out there that doesn't have PCI Express 5. Go B850 if you're really trying to cut back and go on value and get great frames and enjoy PC gaming at the same time. But for those who are looking for the most value and trying to go the best route, 
you can get the AMD Ryzen 7600. Also has six cores, 12 threads. It does offer a great entry point for anybody who just wants to start PC gaming, especially on a budget. If you want to try it out, you want to see how PC gaming's like, you can easily start with a processor like this. Can't really say you can't underscore the 9600X, it's no slouch. It does excellent when it comes to gaming, especially when it goes into 1080p or into 1440p. It's going to be 10 to 15% less of performance compared to the 9600X, which is definitely going to be a bit more respectable when it comes to productivity. Imagine productivity on the 7600, it's really not going to perform well. Keep away from productivity at all when it comes to the 7600, but I recommend it. Use it focused on mainly 1080p and 1440p gaming. Now, fam and guys, if you're looking for any of these processors that you do want to pick up, make sure to check down in the description box down below. And hopefully you found this guide very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below.